what is up guys this is Kido back with another video on the redmi k20 pro and today in this video i'm going to be showing you the latest pixel experience from based on android 12 first january 2022 build here it shows but this is actually the 31st december 2021 build but if you're noticing in the notes this rom is actually based on the android 11 firmware so yes you can definitely flash it but as of right now there is no pixel experience plus edition for android 12 at least so that's why you won't get any customizations as such so let me actually show you the about section first of this rom and if you don't know how to flash this rom check out the description or the cards right there you can find the guide to actually flash this rom and here in the android version the android version shows as android 12 the security patch is still of december 5th 2021 not quite january 2022 yet but here the stock kernel is still the perf g4.14 190 kernel and here is the build number again 31st december 2021 build and this is again an official build of the pixel experience rom in the system settings we have this kind of look and if you go down we have a system updater so from here you can check for updates i guess so as of right now as you can see it shows there is no new updates found so yeah the system updater is there and in the gestures we have the press and hold power button for the assistant and stuff and we have the prevent ringing then the one-handed mode and we have the system navigation gestures if you go into the settings we don't find any such customization to actually increase the pill bar size or something those things are simply not there and we have the two button and three button navigations as well let me go back we have the quickly open camera then the one-handed mode and stuff all these things are there and here we get the gboard as the default keyboard of course and the pop-up camera settings are still there if you go into the sound settings of the pop-up camera you can set a particular sound or you can totally disable the camera popping out sound and we have the camera led enabling and disabling option also we get the live translate so if you want to use that this is a pixel kind of feature you can definitely go ahead and use this one and of course if you go into the developer options if you enable the developer options i mean then if you scroll down more so here it is here is the default usb configuration from here you can set it to file transfer so that it becomes convenient whenever you're plugging in a usb cable with your pc or something so yeah this is what i have changed otherwise the rom feels really really smooth everywhere in the ui i feel this rom is amazingly smooth everywhere and i'm not really sure why the wi-fi is not quite working let me just disable the wi-fi so right now as you can see the wi-fi is properly working so you get the google now cards to the left of the home screen and swiping up gets to the app drawer and this is how the app drawer looks like it still has that accent in the background of the wallpaper itself so this looks beautiful you can search for any particular app just like this and this is how the gboard looks like over here it has this rounded kind of finish it looks beautiful i would say and it has a accent color again from the wallpapers and swiping down in the home screen gets you the quick setting panel and again the quick setting panel even when you have the dark theme disabled it is completely black which is kind of a bummer it looks a little weird i would say even in the white theme the quick setting panel stays black but that's how it is in the pixel experience rom and of course you can edit and add multiple toggles that i have added as you can see from right here i have added plenty of toggles over here but I would say there are not much options or not as much options as other custom ROMs. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Well, we have the mic access, camera access, normal stuff, but there is no FPS info showing up option and stuff like that. No reboot, like advanced reboot kind of dialog box over here. So those things are simply missing. So if you see the power menu, as you can see, we have the lockdown, then the power off, then the restart. That's it. We don't get the advanced reboot, I guess, over here. Not really sure if it's there in the developer settings. I couldn't find it. And we have the android 12 screen recorder with that you can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time flashlight auto red battery saver everything is there and also the dark theme toggle is there then the hotspot the do not disturb then the data saver again is there and we have the nearby share nightlight device control or the google home controls everything is there so you can use those but again the quick setting panel is in this black theme and right now let me add a couple of widgets over here if you go into widgets and right now if i search for the clocks and here we have the android 12 clock widgets so from here let me just add this one so i'll go with this one and as you can see this is how the clock widget looks like and definitely it looks beautiful and bold of course all the new kind of apps are there like the android 12's clock app and that actually looks beautiful with this bold buttons and let me show you the calculator app too here and as you can see this is how it looks like and everywhere this android 12 ui looks just beautiful straight up but yeah we don't have any double tap to sleep or something in the status bar or even in the home screen as you're noticing there is no double tap to sleep so that's a kind of a bummer in this pixel experience from i would say maybe when the pixel experience plus releases 
those features will be present but as of right now there is no double tap to sleep here so you have to use the power button to actually lock the device every time you want to lock the device you have to press the power button and yes double tap to wake is there and as you can see it is working now right now let me just show you the thing with scanner speed and it is fairly fast in my frank opinion as you can see so yeah, the fingerprint scanner is not a problem here as you are noticing even from the always on display and by the way this is how the always on display looks like. Once you double tap it wakes up the screen even then you can tap the fingerprint scanner and that will unlock the device. So let me try one more time I'm just double tapping for no reason. So yeah let me lock the device tap the fingerprint scanner again and as you can see the fingerprint scanner is fairly fast no problems at all with the fingerprint scanner. And in the settings panel everywhere as you can see there is these animations and we have the recent panel look like this and if you go all the way to the left you can clear all the apps from memory you can go into the split screen mode or something from right here you can pin a particular app if you want that let me scroll down we have the battery settings first right now let me talk about the battery settings here is how it looks like we can see the full battery usage if you go into this battery usage kind of thing and right now we have this optimization profiles so this is kind of the thermal profile of android 12 and over here if you tap you can set a particular app to performance or something if you are doing it for the benchmarking app as you can see right now i have this android light set to performance so you can change these to these many options again and we have the battery saver and we have the battery percentage enabling option on the status bar right here but let me talk about the battery life a little bit and here you can get about six to seven hours of screen on time i would say i have tested it with the aku battery app and right now as you can see the screen on actually shows 7 hours and 41 minutes well that is because i didn't use the device quite heavily but yeah you can get about 7 hours of screen on time with this rom considering this is an android 12 rom again the battery life is really good over here also the 18 watt fast charging and stuff should be working properly no issues whatsoever with that and this is how it looks like while charging in the sound and vibration this is how it looks like and we have the volume panel looking like this you can increase the volume media volume and stuff just like this and you can adjust the other stuff like this let me just scroll down we have the other options like the default alarm sound and stuff you can change of course ringtone volume and stuff you can change and the vibration haptics you can of course change but right now i have the device in silent mode that's why it shows off and we have the charging sound charging vibration etc enabling disabling option and with the touch sound and dial pad tones etc you can do the same and in the me sound enhancer we have the me audio direct over here and right now if i show you we have all of these options and with that i have been using it with the youth edition the sound quality with the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is good talking about volti yes i don't have a sim card over here but yeah volti calling and stuff should be working fine here it has a google dialer so no issues with that and we have the choose presets option there are a couple of presets over here too also the hi-fi audio option is there again sound quality via the headphone jack is great also with bluetooth it should be good enough and in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive brightness and the lock screen and stuff and the screen timeout is there and from here you can set it to up to 30 minutes and the dark theme is there you can schedule it from right here and we have the display size the night light option and the colors i have changed it to boosted otherwise it was looking a little weird and we have the double tap to wake again that is working fine now talking about the always on display let me tell you if you want to disable the always on display you have to go into the lock screen then from here go into the ambient display then from here disable this always on display that's how you can disable the always on display properly but for some reason in the display settings there is no de-streaming option or something if you are someone who uses re-streaming that is simply not present in the display settings now here we have the wallpapers and styles by default over here the app grid was set to this 4x4 i guess but i had to change it to 5x5 because that's how i use the device normally so yeah you have all these grid options if you're someone who uses a different kind of grid option you do have that option let me go back we have the themed icon so if you want to enable that you definitely can and we have the accent colors based on the wallpapers or you can go with the basic colors too from here and you can change the wallpapers from right here you have plethora of wallpapers this google kind of wallpaper i have been using this wall app for the wallpapers so yeah living universe and stuff is still there you can use these live wallpapers if you want to and inside security of course we only have the fingerprint option there is no option for the face unlock or something as of right now no app lock no face unlock as of right now only the fingerprint scanner option is there so that's pretty much it about the settings panel and stuff right now let me show you some more things well the camera over here is not that great the stock camera i mean this is a old very old kind of google camera it takes basic pictures you can definitely use this if you want to but i have installed a couple of other cameras like this 
gcam go i'll link all of those things in the description with that the front camera and stuff everything is working fine as you can see the front camera works great no issues whatsoever you can take portrait pictures or you can switch to the video mode or something and that actually works perfectly fine here as you are noticing so yeah with the front camera rear camera gcam go is perfectly working fine also if you want to use the unix version of the gcams yes that too works fine here and with that you don't have that other bug which you face in other like couple of roms here as you can see i can switch between lenses this is the wide angle lens that is actually working perfectly fine here also the 2x telephoto lens is perfectly working if you're noticing so yeah you can use this gcam pretty much it takes very good pictures and night sight and stuff perfectly working here let me switch to the front camera again okay so the gcam is not 100 percent working as you can see the Yonix version of the Gcam actually force closes when you switch the front camera for some reason. But yeah, with the Gcam Go, that is not a problem. As you can see, I'm right now switching to the front camera. As you can see, it's working. I can take a picture. Let me actually take one. So yeah, this is actually working fine with the Gcam Go, but with the normal Yonix version of the Gcam, front camera force closes, but that's how it is as of right now. Currently, let's just open a couple of apps and show you the app open up speeds and the RAM management. Chrome then files facebook and right now let's open twitter play store instagram and right now let's open google home youtube so right now i have all these apps in the memory and right now i'll open one by one so that i can show you if they are still in memory and the Google Chrome, yes, it is still in memory. YouTube, still in memory. Twitter is still in memory. And the Instagram app, and that is too in memory. And the Facebook app as well in the RAM. And here, the Files app is still in the RAM, it looks like. So yeah, all these apps staying in memory. And that simply means the app open up speeds and the RAM management should be really good, as you can see. So I didn't open Play Store earlier, that's why it reopened. So yeah, let me actually show you right now. As you can see, all these apps staying in memory. That is a really good thing that the RAM management is actually very good over here. Since this is a stock Android experience, there is no problems at all with the RAM management or the memory management. So yeah, very good daily driver in my frank opinion. If you are someone who really likes the stock Android experience, this is gonna be one amazing experience for you. And talking about performance, here are the Android Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular ROM. The DRM Info stays L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here without any issues. And right out of the box, you get the safety net passed. That simply means you can use banking apps over here even without any help of Magisk. Also with Google Photos, you get the upload size changing option. You can have it on Express Storage Server or the original quality over here. Also let me show you if the Google Assistant is working with the voice trigger. Hey Google. As you can see, it is working perfectly fine. Let me try one more time. Okay, Google. As you can see again, Google Assistant is not a problem over here. You can also swipe up from these corners to get the Google Assistant. Overall, the Pixel experience is an amazing daily driver, I would say, for the Redmi K20 Pro. Again, if you're someone who likes a very vanilla stock Android experience, this is going to be one perfect option for you. But for someone like me who likes customization on top of stock Android, this is not a kind of ROM that I want to use on a daily basis because I can't simply like do this to actually change the brightness or I can't double tap to sleep in the status bar. Those kind of customization does matter to me and that is a really hard decision if I want to switch to this custom ROM. That's why I did not put my SIM card in it. So yeah, as of right now, I would say if you're someone who likes that kind of stock Android experience, definitely you can use this Pixel Experience ROM. Based on Android 12, this is going to be giving you an amazing experience on top of Android 12. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today. Now until Pixel Experience Plus appears, this is going to be one perfect option for you stock Android lovers. Bye-bye now.